Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In this video, we will talk about inline classes. Well, if you go through the official documentation, it clearly tells us that inline classes are a subset of value-based classes. We have already covered what are value classes in the previous video. To put it simply, inline classes are basically used to create wrapper classes. Well, what do I mean by that? So let me demonstrate it through a demo. So what do we have here? We have a class called as rectangle and it takes two constructor parameters. One is width and another one is height and both of them are of type long. I have a function called as print spec which basically prints the width and height. In the main function what I have done is I have created two variables. One is width and height initialize the values and then I am trying to create a object of rectangle and then print the spec and this is what it is printing. Well the rectangle parameter clearly tells that the first parameter is width and the second parameter is height. But however if I try to pass height here and width here there is nothing much the original author of the class can do about it because right now there is no safety built into our code which will prevent me from passing width as height and height as width if I really want to and that is where inline classes come into picture. So let me create a class called as width it takes long parameter and in the same way I have height and then what I can do is I can pass this width as the first parameter and this height as the second parameter. I need to change the data type here as well. Now you can see that here in line number 16 it is giving me a compile time error because now rectangle expects width and height and you have to pass width and height. If you try to pass height and width it is going to give me a compile time error. I cannot pass anything other than width and height because that is basically baked into the way the class is designed now. So what we basically now did is we wrapped around our simple width and height primary data types with our own custom wrapper class called as width and height and these are basically the wrapper classes which hold the actual primary data types and that is why when I run this it basically shows them as container to primary data types. I could have done it by removing inline as well but then it will not become a inline class. It will not be a wrapper to a primary data type. So if I try to run this now, now you will not see width and height with the values. It will print it as normal object but that is not what we want. We want it to be treated as a wrapper to a primary data type. So that is why the inline keyword is very very important and when I do this it gives me the wrapper class values. If I just try to print the hash code here it prints it as a primary data value. If it was not an inline then it would have printed me a some kind of a hash code for that particular object and that is the reason why you have to use inline keyword when you want to create a wrapper classes for your primary data types. So that's the whole point of using inline classes. This looks quite similar to the value classes that we have discussed in the previous video. So it's quite common that you would have a question that what is the main difference between an inline class and a value class. I will try to address that in the next video. So that's it as of now. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.